Hi everyone, welcome back to today's video. For today, we're gonna to be doing this cute little farmhouse Christmas card, and I am obsessed with this thing. I think it is super cute. I got to play with some snow down here, and I have some on the house and stuff, so I'm really, really, really excited to show you guys this card. Uh, first, let me, hopefully, I'm not getting too much of a shadow and glare. I have a window that's like right behind me, and the sun is just now deciding to shine through that window, so that'll be interesting. Um, but this is more of a, um, I don't want to say it's a difficult card because it's most definitely not difficult, but it does have a lot of steps to it. So I would definitely say this is a card that if you have some free time and you just kind of want to sit down and take it easy and relax um, and just play around, it's definitely that kind of card. Um, so let's get into everything that you're going to need for it. Um, so the first thing is we're going to be using the Farmhouse Christmas stamp set. This is a super cute little adorable stamp set and it also has, whoops, now I'm throwing things. It also has um, some coordinating dies. These are the Farmhouse Framelit dies. We're also going to be using these. So this is a bundle in the holiday catalog. We'll be using both of those. Um, for ink, we're going to be using Stazon because we're going to do some watercoloring and then Versamark because we are going to be doing some embossing. I also have some re-inkers here. So I decided that I wanted to watercolor and um, I really, really, really like using my re-inkers to watercolor. So that's what I decided to go with. I have Early Espresso, Smoky Slate, and Real Red and I will obviously show you guys how we do that. Um, to watercolor with, I have one of our Aqua Pens. For our snow um, to kind of build our scene, I am using the Shimmery White Embossing Paste. This is probably my favorite. And I also have a palette knife off to the side. Um, I also have our gold uh, Stampin' Emboss Powder. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then for our paper. So for our card base, we have a piece of Cherry Cobbler that is cut at 8.5 by 5.5. Um, I have a piece of the Festive Farmhouse Designer Series paper. This has like a wood grain and it looks really pretty on the background. Um, this is cut at five and a quarter by four inches. I have a piece of Balmy Blue, which is cut at th uh, four and three quarters by three and a half inches. And I have just a little tiny scrap of Cherry Cobbler. Um, this is just for the sentiment on the front of the card, so you really don't need a large piece at all. Um, I just, like I said, I grabbed a scrap, and then I'm gonna do my sentiment on here, and then I'll cut it out. So it's so tiny that it's hard to give, like here, use these dimensions. So I'm just gonna take a scrap and then uh, work with it and cut it down when I get to that point. And then I also have um, just a sheet of our watercolor paper. Since we are gonna be doing watercoloring, you're obviously going to need some watercolor paper. Um, so let's go ahead and jump into it. Okay, so let's go ahead and do our watercoloring first. Um, <clears throat> oh, excuse me, my voice is going in and out, in and out. Um, so I'm gonna be using, like I said earlier, my stays on ink, and I'm just going to take the little house that's in the stamp set, and I'm gonna ink that up and I'm gonna stamp it right here. Um, you could use your um, Stamparatus for this because we are using watercolor paper. It's textured, so sometimes you don't get a very clear um, stamp. Ooh, just like that. See, if I was using my Stamparatus, I would have been able to go over that again and not have any issues, but that's okay. Just make sure my stamp is nice and inked up. And you know what? There are two sides to every piece of paper. Okay, let's try that again. And if this one doesn't work, then I might pull out the stamp artist. I didn't have any issues with this yesterday when I was doing this. Oh boy. Make sure it's nice and down. Perfect. See, I knew we could do it. And then I'm also gonna take the little tree and again, get him nice and inked up. Okay, sorry about that. My camera battery died right when I was stamping that. So I just stamped a little tree here, just like the house. Everything is perfect. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm actually gonna take one of my bigger clear blocks. This is the size F block. I wanna say this is the biggest block we have. Um, I normally don't use this. If I have an image that's this large, I usually use my Stamparatus. 
But what it's really good for is watercoloring with, um, really with anything now that I kind of say that. Um, it's really good for using as like a surface for any kind of watercoloring. Um, today I'm obviously gonna be using my re-inkers to, re, uh, to watercolor with, but even if you have like our Stampin' Write markers, you can scribble on the um, block and then pick up the color from there. It works as a really, really, really good surface to do watercolor. Um, what I like to do and what I've kind of done here is I just take a paper towel, I fold it in half, and then I put my block on it to kind of keep it down. Um, but that really helps so that I can, as I'm watercoloring, um, I can make sure that I have the just the right amount of water that I want. Um, and then having the block on the paper towel surface gives me a little bit better of an indication as to what it's gonna look like when I watercolor on the piece of paper. Um, so all I'm gonna do is, and I have to remember this, so I'm gonna put a drop of smoky slate. And so what I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna take my reinker bottles and I'm gonna put them right in front of me in the order that they are on my palette. I'm then gonna take real red and just put a drop here. And then I'm gonna take early espresso. You can put these out um, as you're gonna go about using them if you want to. I just like to kind of get everything prepared um, and ready to go for me so I don't kind of have to go back and shuffle things around. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm gonna take my um, aqua painter, my water brush, and I really hope that that glare isn't too bad. I'm hoping that the sun kind of moves soon. Um, but I'm hoping that at least this portion of the project you can see decently well. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start with a lot of water and I'm gonna use my uh, smoky slate color. So all I'm gonna do is pick up some of that color and I'm really, really, really gonna dilute it. I'm also just gonna test over here. So that's still too dark for me. So I'm really, really, really gonna get some more water in there and dilute it, dilute it, dilute it. That's a little bit more of what I'm looking for. Um, so with this color, I'm just gonna go over the roof. Well, roofs, I should say. Just like this. And this is, a, like I said, this is a time intensive card and in that there are a lot of steps, but it's not super complicated. Um, and then I'm gonna do this little crevice here in the same light watercolor shade. So you can see I'm using my paper towel to kind of clean my brush off if I'm gonna go into a different color. Um, and then I can also, if I feel like I have too much water, I can kind of damp it um, or pat it off on this little paper towel. It works really, really well. Um, while I'm already in my smoky slate color, I'm gonna take just the tip of my brush very, very slightly and dunk it right into the pure color. And there are these little beams here that I'm gonna paint. Nice and dark. Just like this. And then I'm also going to do the exact same thing on the top of this roof over here. And then I'm gonna do the same thing on the top of this little chimney. Perfect. Okay, so, oops, blend that in just a little bit. So now what I'm going to do is um, the roof is a little bit dry. So I'm gonna take my smoky slate again and I'm just gonna go, this is the color that I was using before. I just want something a little bit darker. because I want to do some shadows on this roof. So all I'm going to do is take my color that's just slightly darker and I'm going to put it on the bottom of the roof, just like that. And then I'm basically going to take a, dry, a clean brush that doesn't really have any color and just kind of blend those two together. Really, you're just blending the line from where the two colors meet and then you get some really, really nice shading there. It's super, super easy. Um, you can see I didn't really think too much about it. You just kind of do it and it kind of happens. Um, 
So that's all I'm gonna do for the roof. I'm not gonna do any shading on this area. Just because it's so tiny, you're probably really not even gonna notice the difference, if I'm being honest. Um, you can if you want to. You know what? Heck with it, let's do it. So I'm just gonna put my color down and then blend it in. There you go. And I do need to color in my little chimney here, I forget. Perfect. So that's what we're doing as far as the roof goes. Sorry, I'm readjusting in my chair. <laughs> Um, and it's a very squeaky chair. I need a new one. Maybe that's what I should ask for for Christmas. Um, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go into my real red. And for the real red, I'm not diluting this at all. I am literally just dunking my brush in and I am gonna pat it off just a little bit to make sure that it's not too watery. But I'm gonna go straight in and I'm gonna color all of the shutters this really, really nice deep dark red shade. The reason that I like using reinker so much to do watercoloring or just coloring in general really um, is because you can play so much. You have so much control over what color you're doing, over the shade that you're doing. Um, and it really gives you the ability to uh, play with it and make it exactly what you want it to be. Uh, you know, you can use your ink pad and you can use your stamp and write markers like I was talking about earlier. Um, but using the reinker really gives you the freedom and the flexibility to kind of do whatever you want, especially if you're doing some gradients or things like that. It makes it really, really easy. Um, I'm actually gonna go back over these to darken them up just a smidgen. Um, and then as you can see, they're super um, economic. So, I mean, you can buy this whole bottle of reinker. Um, I wanna say they're like $3.50. I could have totally made that up, so don't quote me on that. Um, but they're not super expensive. And you can see I used one drop. That's one drop of a reinker, and I'm not even using most of it. So they go a long way, um, and they're relatively inexpensive. Obviously you could use them to re-ink your ink pads also, so it's not like you would just use it for watercolor, but I think it works out really well and I really like it. I just, like I said, I personally like the flexibility that you get with it. Um, you have a really super concentrated color, but very easily I can take this and I can dilute it down into a pretty wash. You can see those are two drastically different colors and you just can't do that as easily using a Stampin' Write marker or just using your uh, straight up ink pad. So anyways, that's my spiel on that. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do the tree. Um, I'm not really gonna do anything special with this. I am more so just going to color the tree in brown and then I'm gonna take it um, just like I did with the roof, and I'm just gonna darken it up a little bit up the trunk and in some of these branches, just to give it a little bit of texture um, and some contrast. So I'm actually just gonna turn some music on so that you don't have to listen to me uh, make small talk as I do this, um, and I will be right back. Okay, so I watercolored my little tree. The sun is coming in through the window more, so, but we're just gonna keep pushing on and uh, hopefully you guys can see what I'm doing and it's not too crazy. Well, um, so I've watercolored both of my little images. I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna set this off to the side and we're going to move a little further away from watercoloring right now. Um, so to clean off your block, all I do is I take the paper towel that I have and just give it an initial wipe down to get off like the um, drops of color. And then I grab a trusty baby wipe and wipe it down. And you'll see, especially like the reds always leave lots of color and then it's nice and clean and ready to use all over again. So if you have some of these big blocks lying around like I did, um, and when I got my Stamparatus, like I said, I stopped using it, um, there are definitely uses for those big blocks. 
So what I'm going to move on to next is creating our little background scene. So I'm actually going to use my watercolor paper. Sorry, I forgot I was doing this in a different step than I originally did it. So I'm gonna use my watercolor paper. And I'm gonna grab my Big Shot. And I am going to, whoa, I'm going to cut out my little fences. So I'm gonna cut two of these out. You actually don't need two of them. It's like just shy of only needing one. Um, but nevertheless, I'm gonna cut out two. And then we're gonna build our little snow scene. And the reason I wanna do that now is because I want to give my embossing paste enough time to really dry. Um, so I want to start working on that right now. I am cranking this through twice because I am using the watercolor paper. It is thicker. So I want to make sure that I cut all the way through, especially with this because it is, it isn't super delicate, but it could be very, it could be delicate very easily. So I'm going to do that a second time. Like I said, it's like so short. You guys will see when I put it down on the piece of paper. It's so short of being, uh, of only needing one of these, but you definitely do need two. Okay, let's crank it through a second time. my big shot uh, handy because I'm going to use it again to cut out my watercolor pieces. Actually, I actually always have my big shot handy. It has its nice own little home right there. Um, okay, so what I'm going to do is take my poker tool and I'm just going to poke out all of these little pieces. Maybe. Did I not? There we go. If I had one of those brushes, it would probably go a little bit easier, but this honestly doesn't take long at all. It's super quick. You just have to go back and make sure you get rid of all of the little guys. Maybe this one doesn't want to come up doesn't want to come with me. There we go. Some of these are pretty stuck. There. Hopefully the rest of these will go a little bit easier. No. Hmm. Okay, let's try this one. Well, what the heck? Okay, so I got what I needed to get done with my little fences. I also put up some paper over this little, over my blinds over here. So hopefully no more sun glare. I think we'll be good. Um, so you'll see that I didn't punch out all of the little rails. Um, you don't actually need to, uh, you need at least one of them to be about halfway done. And then the other, you really barely even see it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my piece of balmy blue and I'm going to be using my fine tip glue. Oops. If I can get it open. There we go. And I am just going to put some glue on my little fence here. And then I'll put a bunch over here where I didn't cut all of the stuff out. There we go. Whoops, and it's sticking to my finger. Okay, and then I'm gonna put this about an inch, I would say, above the bottom of the, oops, the bottom of the paper. And I'm just going to hold it down with my hand. 
you can see that some of the glue is coming out. I'm not overly concerned about that because we're gonna put a bunch of snow and a house on top of it and you won't even notice. You do want some baby wipes or something to wipe your hands off with though. And I'm going to take my silicone mat and one of my big blocks and I'm just going to press and press and press for a few minutes, not even a few minutes, a few seconds, just to make sure that that stays down really nicely. See, voila. And that, like I said, you don't even need that much of this second fence. So I'm going to take my snips, except not those. Here are the ones for paper. I feel like my house is very echoey today. And I don't know why. And I'm just going to snip off a little bit. I'm going to do the exact same thing. Put some glue on the back. flip it over and then stick it right down just like so okay so now is where the fun part comes in well I feel like all of this is fun but the really really fun part is creating our snow so sorry I'm just wiping off my silicone mat to make sure that I got all of the glue off of it um, so we're going to put all of our snow down onto our piece. And like I said, it's probably my favorite part. I'm a little obsessed with the shimmery white embossing paste. Um, so I have my silicone mat here, um, just so I'm not super, have to be super worried about making sure that, um, the embossing paste doesn't go all over the place and onto my desk. Um, all I'm going to do is take the shimmery white emboss paste and the first thing I'm going to do is just do a nice even coat on the very bottom. And I, the reason I put the fence down first is because I want the fence to be covered as well. So. I'm going to just do this as a base layer. Because you want it to look realistic. You want it to look like this is like a little house scene that's been put up in some snow. They got some snow going on. Whoops. Dang it, my paper fell. Ah! The sun is back. Give me 2.2 seconds. Okay, I think I fixed it. It may fall down again. You know, you just really never know. So I have my nice little base layer there. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pick up some globs and I'm basically just going to kind of, whoa, I'm gonna kind of just smush it down and give it some texture. That's really what I want with this. I want it to look like snow. I want it to be textured. I want it to look fun. So I'm just gonna take this and smush it down. And you want there to be some thicker part, like this part right here, I want it to be a little bit thicker, like the snow has been built up there. And then other parts like down here, I don't want it to be as thick. So it's all about just giving it some texture, making it look like there is some pretty sparkly snow on the ground. Oops. And so you just keep kind of doing this, keep building it up until you're happy with it. I think I'm pretty happy with that. Um, the only other thing I'm going to do, I'm gonna clean off my palette knife a little bit. I'm gonna take some snow, some snow. I'm calling this stuff snow, guys. And I'm just gonna kind of put it, build it up along the fence. Um, along the rail of the fence. So obviously there are gonna be some areas that have more snow than others. Um, I just wanna make sure that everything kinda of gets that snowy look to it. And again, most of this is gonna be covered up, so I'm just gonna put a little bit over here. Perfect. Now, the last thing that I'm going to do is to give it, oh my Lord, okay. 
You know what, we're gonna roll with the sun. I'm almost done with this part and I'm gonna have to let this dry for a little bit before we can move on. Anyway, so the last thing I'm going to do is again, take my paste and I'm just, for this, you don't want there to be much on your palette knife and I'm just gonna do some dots in the sky um, just to kind of simulate snow falling and it gives a little bit of extra texture to the sky. That's it, that's all I'm doing. Like I said, I'm gonna now take this, I'm gonna pick it up off of the craft, or off of my silicone mat, and I'm going to let this completely dry before we move on to the next phase. Okay, y'all, I am so sorry. I think I have it figured out this time. So, we're gonna roll with this. I have my little piece that we just snowed um, sitting over here to the side, just drying. Um, but I want to continue on with the rest of our card. So I'm going to pull out my big shot again. Ooh, maybe. And I'm going to now cut out um, our house and our little tree image here. So again, we have a couple of die cuts or die cuts, um, framelits to die cut. And I have my little snippity doodad of washi over here. So I'm just going to line this up. The tree is a little, I don't want to say hard to line up. It just is a little um, finicky, not finicky, but there are a lot of little shapes that you have to line up. So um, I wouldn't fret too much about it. It turns out really well, even if you don't get it 100% perfect. Okay, so. I'm gonna go ahead and cut these out. Maybe if I can bring it through. Whew, that was rough. Okie dokie. I'm gonna put my big shot away for the last time. Scooch on over. And then I'm gonna peel my little images up. There is our house. And let's see how our tree came out. Perfect. Um, there are a couple little pieces in the tree that you wanna pop out. Um, nothing too crazy, but there are a few. So you wanna make sure you get those out. Um, so now we have our little house. So what I wanna show you guys, so in my sample, I took a black marker and I went around the edge of the house just to make it pop a little bit more. For this one, I'm not gonna do it just so I can show you guys what it looks like, um, but you can kinda of get the image here of what it's going to look like. So you can kinda of see the difference. The house definitely feels like it has like a shadow behind it, so I feel like it pops off of the card just a little bit more. Um, but I wanted to do this one without doing that in case you didn't like that look, which not everybody does. Um, so we have these two pieces out. I am going to set them off to the side as well. And now let's grab our little piece of doo -doo 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 cherry cobbler and let's go ahead and emboss that. So I'm gonna grab just a piece of paper and I'm gonna grab my emboss buddy and I'm just going to wipe him all over there. Um, what did I do with my gold embossing powder? There it is. I'm going to take the little sentiment that says thoughts of happiness and joy to you and yours. And I'm gonna grab my verse mark. Get that bad boy all inked up. And whoops, I'm gonna flip it and do it on this thing. And just stamp that down as best as I can. Okie dokie. I'm then going to take my gold embossing powder. So it, at first it looks like, oh my gosh, I'm never gonna be able to read that, ugh. But I promise you, I promise you, it turns out really, really nicely. So I'm gonna take my paper, just like that. 
And then I'm going to take my heat tool and we're gonna heat set this. So just like that, as soon as the embossing powder starts melting, you can really see the letters really pop on the cherry cobbler. It's super, super pretty. So now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna live life on the edge a little bit and I'm just gonna cut this down with my scissors. So there's a good chance that I'm gonna cut it crooked, um, but I just think it's easier than trying to stick it in your um, paper trimmer. There, not too bad. Um, okay, so now I think let's go ahead and assemble our card. Ooh. Um, so I still have my piece over here that's drying just a little bit. It's still slightly wet, um, but I think it's dry enough that we can probably handle it. Sorry, I'm getting all of like, you get some like flakies as it starts to dry. Um, you get some things that kind of like fall off. So we'll do that at the very end. Uh, first, I'm gonna take my card base. And let's just fold this bad boy. Just like so. I'm gonna take my designer series paper. And I'm gonna put that down as well. Okay, just like so. And now I'm going to take our piece here and I'm gonna put this down. So I'm going to use, maybe if I can find it, I want to use tear and tape and I just had it last night. <sighs> if y'all could see my desk right now, you would be like, yeah, that makes total sense. That's why you can't find diddly squat. Just kidding. I found it. So I'm going to use tear and tape just because it's really uh, strong. Oh, see, look, I'm losing a bunch of snow again. It's really strong and because this piece has so much texture on it, um, it's likely that it's gonna wanna try to warp um, and hopefully using the tear and tape will prevent that from happening just a little bit. And if you ever get any of the little edges that kinda go too long, just snip them off. Man, I feel like this video is just a hot mess, y'all. I'm sure you feel the same way too. So I apologize. But like I said in the beginning, I think this is really a card that you just kind of want to sit down and just have fun and play with. Um, it's not something that's going to be practical to like whip up 30 of them for your holiday cards for this year. Absolutely not. But it is really fun when you're just kind of in the creative mood and you just want, ooh, now I'm pulling up the paper instead of just the backing. Um, when you're in kind of that creative mood and you just want to do a fun project um, that's gonna take a little bit of time and a little bit of craft, um, this is definitely a fun one to do. Okie dokie, just like that. Now I'm gonna wipe off my surface again and I'm gonna put this bad boy down like so super super adorable oh i love it so cute okay now all we're gonna do is put down um our little pieces so again um i actually want this to be raised so i'm going to use some dimensionals for this but what i'm going to do so i'm going to do four dimensionals actually i'll do five i'll do one in the middle I'm gonna take the backings off of all of them. Okay. Now for the three that are in the lower half of the house, because the snow, because the paste is really textured, I'm just going to take some of my fine tip glue and I'm gonna put that on the little dimensionals so that I still have that dimension that I want, um, but I have a better chance of it holding on the uh, project this way. Oh my gosh, the sun is moving still. We're almost done. 
So I'm going to place this, I'll do it like right here. So again, you want to hold this down for a few seconds because you do have these dimensionals down here that have the fine tip glue pen on them. We just want to make sure that they adhere really nicely. Do, 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 do. Perfect. You can kind of pick it up and look and see if they've adhered. It looks like they have. Now for my tree, same exact thing. I am just going to use our mini dimensionals because the tree is obviously, um, it's a little thinner. Do a couple up top. Super cute. I love our little mini dimensionals. They're just adorable. Okay. And again, I'm going to do the exact same thing um, with the lower two dimensionals. Put some of the fine tip glue on there um, just to make sure that it adheres really nicely to the card. Just to add some dimension and some depth, I'm going to put the tree a little bit lower than the house. And again, just hold it there for a few seconds to make sure that it really adheres nicely. Okay, I think we're good there. And then the last piece is our little sentiment. So to adhere down the sentiment, I'm just going to put one dimensional right in the middle. And then I'm gonna use our fine tip glue pen and just put some glue on the sides. Again, glue on the dimensional because that will be going on the snow. And if I can pick it up without dropping it on myself, that would be great. And I'm just going to stick it down right there. And again, hold it for a few seconds to make sure it's all good and gravy. And there you have it. There is our little card for today. So again, this one is a journey. I am fully aware. I'm t I totally know. Um, but thank you guys for sticking around. I really hope you enjoyed this card. And I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.